My cat is playing, I'm sorry. This is gonna be a thing that we're just gonna have to deal with for the rest of our lives. Apologize. Hey nerds, what's up? So today is a day for a book talk and I am actually going to skip my fact of the day and just get right on into this book talk and do a little spoiler free version first because this video is gonna be real long. <laughs> I hope not, but I feel like it probably will. So let's do a spoiler free section real fast before we get into this video. And we are doing a book talk on Queen of Shadows by Sarah J Maas. So I gave this book a five out of five stars because it was bomb. This is the fourth book in a series. So if you haven't read the entire series, which starts with Throne of Glass by Sarah J Maas, it, the series is basically about a girl named Selenia Sardothian who starts off as an assassin. She gets enslaved because she got caught and then the King of Ardalan decides to pardon her if she wins the championship in order to be his assassin. So the first book is all about her in the championship trying to win in order to get herself pardoned so she doesn't have to go back into the enslavement camp. And that's the basic premise of Throne of Glass. I was talking to somebody and describing this series for them. If you like the Game of Thrones TV show but you don't want to read them because they're too dense, this is the book for you. Because these books read like YA. I mean, they are YA. They read quickly, they're, they're fast paced, and they're amazing, but they're so detailed in the sense of how Game of Thrones is, and it's perfect, and the multiple chapter, the multiple point of views, and everything is just really, really so amazing of the series. Now, if you have read all the way up to Era of Fire, but you haven't read Queen of Shadows, you can stay. But if you haven't read any of them, bye. Okay, if you have read the rest of the series, but you just haven't read this, you're still safe because I do want to just give a short little recap. Once again, 5 out of 5 stars. This book was amazing. I absolutely love everything about it. So much stuff happens in this book, and I felt that they did a really good job of not, you know, making all of it happen up at the front or up at the end and just having a really long book of waiting and planning. A lot of stuff happened throughout it, and I loved that about it. I love all of the characters, we get more Manon chapters, the witch chapters, and I love them. This series gets better as it goes on, like Throne of Glass was good, it was so good. And then I read Crown of Midnight and I was like, holy shit, this is amazing. And then I read Arrow of Fire and I was like, oh my god, this is the best. And then I read this and I'm just like, oh my god, I think this might be better than Harry Potter and I'm having a mental breakdown because I've never said that before in my life. <gasps> good. Great. Read it. Okay. Now, we're gonna get into some spoils, so if you haven't read Queen of Shadows yet, See ya. Bye, non spoiler people. This book is so good. I, I love the plot. I love the characters. The character development is beyond understandable. Like, let me first say that the Kale ship stopped. I was Team Kale in the in the Crown of Midnight. But then honestly, I wasn't Team Kale anymore in Era Fire because Rowan came along and people were like, oh, I didn't even realize that Rowan was going to be a love interest. And I'm just like, um, he was a love interest the second he showed up for me. I want him. Can I have him then? But I wasn't really into Kale anymore throughout the third book because Kale was just being a little bit annoying and a little bit weird towards the idea of Selena when she came back and stuff. And it, he just didn't seem... Yeah, I know that. And so I really liked Rowan. I liked both of them still. I, I was I wasn't against Team Kale in Era Fire, but when this book happens, I kind of hated him for a minute. Can you stop? Like stop calling you're a fucking monster. Are you kidding me? Can you get off your high horse thinking you're so amazing because you're human? And Dorian, my poor baby Dorian. He he made me so sad and so worried for him. And I just was like, you're gonna be okay, I think. I hope you're gonna be okay. And Rowan, oh my god. Especially like once the scenes start happening where you start hearing his thoughts about how hot she is and like what he wants to do to her and then her thoughts on him. And <sighs> I'm gonna try to go in order of like the things that happen, but I'm sorry if this review is just a little bit out of order because I actually wrote my notes after I finished reading the book. I didn't write while reading. The heist scene was fucking glorious. The idea of being the dancer st a standby, like, wh who thinks of things like that? That was amazing! And I love that throughout this entire book, we don't get the, like, plot 
the 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 plan before it actually happens like they never tell us anything until it's happening and it's just happening and you're just like oh shit is this what's supposed to happen i don't know and it was so good it just makes you so nervous and the idea for the flowers being thrown and then turning into smoke <gasps> it was so good and adian finally seeing aelin across the room he sees her queen and oh my god it's just like and then when they finally get to say hi again to each other after all of these years, they both have been looking for each other. Aelin wasn't was worried that he wouldn't really be Adian anymore because she thought that he had turned over to the dark side. I'm gonna say that even though it's the wrong genre and whatever, but whatever. My mind just like blew up every five seconds while reading this fucking book. It was so good. Then we find out that Lysandra, I, I don't remember if this happens before or after that, but Lysandra, who we were a little bit worried, I was I was a little bit worried she might be not good. I, I was worried she might be in on the whatever plan uh, Arabin was planning. I was a little bit worried at first, but then of course, once Rowan shows up, he just smells her and he's like shapeshifter, and I'm just like, holy shit, what? I loved Lysandra by the end of this book. Like, Lysandra is my new best friend. I want her to be my friend. I don't want her to be Selena's friend or Aileen's friend. I want her to be my friend, but also she like, she's such good hearted. Like, after you learn more about her story, the fact that she gave up her freedom for Evangeline and it's so good. Everything is so amazing. And then she comes back for them and turns into a vicious, badass snow leopard. Yeah. I thought the weird throwing up scene in that at the end was weird, but that's fine. Real quick on the general character development. Like, the amount of character development that happens between all of these characters. If you've read Assassin's Blade, then you know the character development within Lysandra. You, I mean, the amount of character development within Aelin. She is... A completely different person and I loved she there's this moment in it that she says that she can finally shed Selena from herself or something like that she says shed and I absolutely loved that Aileen is such a complicated character since she is kind of playing this other role throughout her entire life once she's found by Arabin and and I loved that we got a little bit of like obviousness to that like Selena is not who Selena is Selena is not who Aileen is Aileen is Aileen and Aileen is a queen from the beginning of Era Fire all the way up to now the character development that we've seen within that queen Aileen like she's so fucking badass okay we need to talk about that moment in Arabin's house when he slips that little fucking ring on Selena's hand, on Aelin's hand, and tells her to blink. And then tells her to say I love you and all of that. I flipped the fuck out. I was sitting on the couch that you can't see. It's right there. I was laying and I was facing that way, facing the door. Matt is sitting on his chair, which is in front of me. And I was just like, ah! and I dropped the book on myself. And Matt turned around and he was like, what's happening? And I was like, something just happened. I can't handle it. Ah! And I was like, I don't know if I can pick up this book. I need to go to work, but I'm not ready. And so then I did luckily pick up the book right before I had to go to work. I literally had five minutes before I needed to leave my house, but I decided to pick it up and just try to finish the chapter real quick. And the next page, you realize that that's not really what happened. And I was just like, <gasps> it was terrifying. Because can you imagine having Arbin having control over Aelin? Not only for their characters, like Arbin having control over Aelin, like how awful is just that idea in and of itself, but also how awful is the idea of Arbin having control over the powerful and power that Aelin now holds. I mean, she's Queen of Terrace and not only that, but she's also got all of these plots going on that we don't even know about at this point. <gasps> Such a good scene. We need to talk about just Manon and Morath and Elid and that the entirety of the witches. I think Manon is one of my favorite characters. I mean, she is. She is one of my favorite characters. I love the witch scenes. I loved watching Manon kind of grow a little bit within her humanity when she gets to know a lead and starts taking care of a lead. I thought that was a really, really, really great choice of just like showing Manon as not so much a monster and like also the development of how we see from the beginning, like, man views herself as this, like, heartless, not evil thing being, but just heartless. I mean, they, she views the witches as, as heartless in general. And then, 
that scene happened in the Air of Fire with the Crochin, Crokin witch, who says that they've made you monsters, and she realizes later in Queen of Shadows that yes, they made us. And that fucking grandmother of a witch <laughs> is a bitch. That really rhymed, and I'm really proud of it. But I just hate her so much. All I want in my life, in the next two books, somewhere in the next two books, is Man and Aelin to team together and just fucking rule the world. And I don't mean in like a creepy, tyrannical way. I just mean like they're so badass. They deserve it. And I want to see Man and take down her grandmother or Aelin do it for her because isn't it bad for witches to kill witches? I don't know. But that bitch needs to die. That she needs to go. She needs to be gone. The whole thing about Morath and it being the where the King Valg sleeps and all of that stuff was so creepy and I love how it's all coming together so slowly. Like this pacing is so well done. I loved getting to know more about Morath as Aelin finds out about it and she realizes that the King Valg is still in Morath and then further the King of Arlen tells them that Parrington is the is the king, the Valg king, but is he really? I don't know. I don't know if I believe that. I did at first and then I was watching more reviews and I actually really like the idea that Kat from Katie Tastic said, which was maybe it's the prince, Prince Dorian's little brother, the evil one, the annoying one, the pain in the ass one. I really liked that idea and I also have a theory of my own, which is just that the, the Valg king actually isn't in anyone quite yet, but Parrington's goal is for it to be inside of him. I like that idea as well. And we need to talk about Caltain, who Again, character development. Are you fucking kidding me? We start off with hating Caltaine. I mean, in the first book and the second book, she's the most annoying human on the fucking planet. She's irritating. She's in the way. She's just, like, trying to get a crown. Like, what is she doing? Is she trying to marry Dorian? I'm not even sure. And she's just annoying as shit. She turns into this badass motherfucker who goes and breaks apart a third of Morath and burns it to pieces with her crazy-ass shadow fire. I really hope she survived. I really want her to come back with a vengeance because with that power, I feel like she could survive what she did and come out like queen of the fucking world. Her and Manon and Aelin all together. Oh my god, the power trio. Like, oh, it would be so good. I also just love how many female badasses we have in this series. Like, we have the three of them. We have Nezrin is really badass. Lysandra, obviously. And then we had Nehemia, who obviously has passed now. But all of these badass mo women, even like the bad guys, we have the badass grandmother witch who we hate. We have Astrid and all of the other witches, too. All of these strong women female characters who are just amazing. Astran's story was so, so sad and I loved it and I loved that it made Manon kind of realize that she shouldn't be maybe taking all of the orders from her grandmother that she is and I loved that aspect. The creepy fucking Valg babies, ew, I'm glad they're gone. Dorian and Manon, I need that to happen in my life, please. Like, I loved that. I want it to happen. I want Manon and Dorian to get together. That would be amazing. Dorian and Manon, Aelin and Rowan, and we need to find Kale. I don't know if I like Nezrin. I do like Nezrin. I don't know if she's the one, though, because Sarah J. Mass, like, switches it up all the time. I'd be down for a new person for Kale, but also I like Nezrin. Lorcan is just annoying. Is Lorcan a good guy or a bad guy? Because he first traps them in the first place with the fucking word hounds, and then he comes back and saves them. Like, what are you doing? What is what is your point? Why are you here? The fact that he's Adian's father, I... I I'm interested to see where this is all going. Is Aelin actually going to end up immortal? Because I really want her to be immortal. I feel like she should be immortal. Is she not? Like, why do they keep saying she's mortal? I feel like that might end up happening. I, I feel like that fairy tale aspect will happen. I also am really glad that it came out that Aelin did kill Baba Le Yellow Legs earlier rather than later because now that it's out in the open and now that they've had their big ass fight which was glorious and I'm so glad Manon didn't die. I actually wasn't that worried that she would die. I knew she would get out somehow. I wasn't sure how but I love that Aelin saved her and I'm really glad that all of that information has already come out because I really want them to team up and end up as uh, allies in this like king of war, the war that's going to inevitably happen. I, I really want them to end up as partners in this war and I think that it's really good that that has come out and passed and they've dealt with that now. Aelin's threat to the people of Terrison was kind of creepy. I 
was reading it and just was like, oh, Aelin, what are you doing? Stop. It was very creepy. I, I understand in that moment why Kale was so worried about her being like so powerful as Faye because she was terrifying and I mean she saves the city and that the whole scene is amazing but also she's pretty terrifying in her threat to Terrison when she says your king your new king is alive but I have order until he is ready to take his crown and all that stuff that was a really creepy moment my one annoyance with this book is how many times is she going to lose a breath can we just stop with that I don't like it. That is my very quick review, as quick as possible. Sorry that I was rushing at the end. Uh, book talk from Queen of Shadows by Sarah J. Mass. My baby. She, there's it's just it's no words. It's the most amazing book I've ever read. And most amazing series I've ever read and it's just so good and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed. Comment down below what your favorite scene was or your favorite character or both of Queen of Shadows is, was, etc. And I will see you guys very soon with a new video. Bye!